In this video, I'm going to solve the Word Scramble app. So, I bet if you tried, you could read this paragraph. According to research, a research study at Cambridge University, it doesn't matter in what order the letters are in, in a word are. The only important thing is that the first and last letter be in the right place. So this is a fun little program where we're going to, going to break a sentence into individual words, and then we're going to scramble the words according to some rules. So the rules are really important to follow, and that will help us understand um, how we how exactly we're supposed to scramble words. So the first rule is the first and last letters of each word are to remain in place. Only interior letters need to be scrambled. Leading and trailing punctuation will remain in their original location and not counted as the first and last letter in the word. Interior punctuation may be scrambled. So in the case of down, down, down below, so you can see that the apostrophe has shifted in the middle of the, sen of the middle of the word. And lastly, the letter case cannot be altered. And that makes our life a little bit easier. So let's move over to the code. So Lynn is going to come to us as a sentence, and I want to break this into individual words. So I'm going to make a string array called words, and I'm going to call split on my sentence and split it on spaces because that's going to be the delimiter for the sentence and the words are the tokens. Now the words might have punctuation in them and it would probably be a good idea just to check that you're splitting this correctly and so I'm going to pass in words and let's look at what I'm calling um, as a test, uh, pre test parameter. So I've passed in this sentence that's true accountability in learning and I've got an apostrophe here which is considered interior uh, punctuation and then some exterior punctuation of some single quotes around accountability and a period over here. Um, but what it should break apart in um, with the split is on the spaces. So let's run this just to see what our what our words look like when it runs. So that looks really good. All of the tokens are the words as we want them. So all we have to do is iterate through all of these words in the words array. Oh, let me try that again. And then scramble each one and print it. So I can, um, I can scramble the word by calling another method I haven't written yet called scramble. I'm going to pass in the word from the words array. And once I get that word, I'm going to print, print it. And I want print instead of print line. And I'm going to print the word concatenated with um, a space. Okay. So if I could call a method that magically scrambled the word, all I have to do is just print out the scrambled word with a space in between. Now I need to make this method. So I can do that over here. This is called a helper method. It helps us perform some task in another method. So this is public and static. Uh, it will return a string, the scrambled word. It's called scramble and it takes in a word. Um, right now, I'm just going to write return null. Um, I will change that, obviously, later. Just want to see that um, I have one, two, three, four, five, five words, and it does print out null five times. So let's write this method. So this is where I would go to the white whiteboard, and I would think of um, the word that I would like to do. So I'm going to choose one of the example strings that was um, given to us in the problem, bygones, comma, uh, I'm sorry, exclamation, comma, end quote, and what I'm going to do going through this is um, I basically want to isolate 
these middle letters right there. I would like to know the beginning um, index and the ending index of this range. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is create variables f, which starts at position zero, and I'm gonna move it this way until it finds the first letter. Um, and then I'm going to create variable e, it's gonna start on the right edge and move left until it lands on uh, this s. I, I want him to stop at the first first character. Once we're at the first character, I'm going to nudge them over one more time. That's supposed to be an arrow. Um, and then right here, because I ultimately want F to be in this position and E to be in this position. So I'm going to use a loop to move F to the left, um, to the right, and E to the E to the left. So for the scramble method, the first thing I'm going to do is convert my string to a character array of letters because it will be easier to update and change the letters using an array. Word.2 char array will do the conversion for me. And then I'm going to create a variable f that's going to represent the point to the first index. And I'm going to move it until we find the first letter. Now it may be at the first letter already. So if F starts at the first index, E is going to start at the last index. Oops. Letters dot length minus one. Now, I would like to keep moving F further to the right if it's not landing on a character. Uh, this needs to be a while instead of an if. So while, and I'm going to use the character method character is letter Oops. and I'm going to grab the character at F and this method here this character is letter method is going to take this letter and tell me if it's a letter if it's not a letter I need F to keep moving forward I need F to land on the very first letter and I'm going to do the same thing with E except for the E, I'm going to decrement E. So when these loops finally end, E and F will be pointing to a character. Now, once it's pointing to a character, if we look back at our diagram here, F will be pointing to capital B, but I have to nudge it one more so that it's, it's uh, equal to the index at Y, and E, will currently be set to S, but I'm going to decrement it so that is equal to the index for the E. So F plus plus and E minus minus. So when the loops ended, F and E were pointing to the exterior letters, but now nudging them forward, uh, they're going to be pointing to the interior letters so now it encompasses a range, an inclusive range of all the letters I would like to scramble. Because I need to scramble stuff, I need a random number generator. So we'll make a random object. Then I'm going to loop through the character array, but I'm only going to loop through the, the indexes that I plan to scramble. So int i is going to start at f. And it's going to go up to and include, because E and F are inclusive uh, indexes, it's going to go from F, uh, from F to E. So what I'm going to do now is I need to generate a random number within that range. Going back over here, pick up a different color. Um, I'm going to clean some of this stuff up just to get it out of the way. Um, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to have I um, go within this range. Here, let's get rid of this. I is going to start at F, and it's going to move this direction. 
And when I land on a certain letter, I'm going to randomly choose another letter. So it's possible that the random letter that I choose is, is this one. So O and Y are going to swap. Then as I move on to say the next value, which would be G, um, then I might choose another random letter like N and then it's going to swap with N. So that's what I'm doing in my code. So I have to have values that go within the range. Well, let's go over to the, the whiteboard because I've written some of this out for you. So when you have an inclusive range like this, min and max, and it's written this way with the square brackets on either side, that means it's inclusive of min and inclusive of max. And for an inclusive range, the scaling factor, which is how many outcomes that there are, you take the maximum value minus the minimum value and add one back because it's inclusive. And of course, the shifting value is almost always the min value. So now that I have scaling factor and shifting value, I just put them into the equation like this. So the random number generators next int will be scaled with the scaling factor, and then to it we add the shifting value. RNG dot next int, and here's our formula. We're going to take the larger of the two, which which our, our max is e, subtract f, which is our min, add one back because it's inclusive, and that will do the scaling, and then we add the lower number of the min value as our shifting value. Now we have to perform a swap. We have to swap the value at i with the value at r. A swap always requires three assignments. So I'll store uh, the first the first character in a variable called temp, and this is going to be set equal to letters at index i, and that's because I'm going to overwrite the value at i, and if I didn't store it in a temporary value, I would lose it. And it's going to be replaced with the value from r. Next, the value from r can finally take on the value we stored in temp, which was formerly the value at I. So this will iterate through all the values of the, or all indexes for the interior letters. We'll generate a random number to swap with the number at each position, or the character at each position. So our swap is complete. And now we should be able to return a string, so new string, that whose characters come from the letters array. So that'll construct a new string, and this method should be complete. So let's run it and see what happens. So what we should see is that the T and the S are intact. We see the interior letter scrambled. Um, again, the T is at the beginning, the E is at the end, the interior letters are scrambled. The A is still intact even despite having a, an apostrophe. Same with the Y. And the G and the period are in place as well as the L. And if we, re, if we keep calling this, we should see that it is changing a bit. We've seen this, see this interior, apo, interior apostrophe shifting ar around as well. So this does match the requirements of the assignment. So just to step through again, we see that the word scramble method splits the line into individual words um, around the um, delimiter of a space. And then we loop through all of those words we call the scramble method to scramble each word and then print the return value. In the scramble method, we convert our string to a character array for ease of use. We create indexes at the beginning and the end. And we shift F to the right until we find a letter. We shift E to the left until we find a letter. Those would be the exterior letters 
we move E to its first interior letter, I'm sorry, F to its interior lever, letter and E to its interior letter. And then we loop through each of those interior letters and we swap it with the random, uh, random letter from, from the same range and return a string.